Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Welcome to our pre-service meditation here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So glad you could join us via Facebook Live or Zoom. So we're going to take the next 10 minutes to just get still, turn within, and just focus on the now moment. So I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are and to be relaxed but in a posture where you won't have a tendency to nod off. Close your eyes. And one of the greatest tools for bring our, bringing our awareness to this now moment is just to focus on the breath, that miracle of life that keeps unfolding moment by moment through us. So I invite you to focus on each in-breath and each out-breath. You may want to silently say to yourself, I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. Just keeping the focus on the breath. And if the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, this is an opportunity to just observe with great compassion. Don't judge, just notice where the mind went. Be with that for a moment and then let the thought just drift away as you bring your awareness back to the breath, breathing in, breathing out.
so gently bring your awareness back into your setting where you are, into your body. You may want to wiggle your fingers and your toes just to get a sense of anchoring your awareness in the body and gently open your eyes. And so, once again, welcome to all of you. If any of you joined us since we began the meditation, we're so glad you're here with us for our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place, led by our wonderful Sam Krieger and Jia Chimbati. <laughs> Thank you, Gia. Indeed, joy, God, love is in this place. And on the subject of being in this place, before we move into our invocation, I'm going to call up our board president, uh, Blair Thompson, to just talk a little bit about the subject of when we might start gathering in this place once again. So, Blair. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted a musical intro. Um, so, oh, happy day. That's, that's what I put on my paper. It's amazing you came up with that. Um, so, good news. Um, October 18th, 945, we're going to have in-person services again. It's going to be limited. It's going to be modified. It's going to be reimagined. But we're going to have people here. So here's how it's going to work. Um, on Sunday, October 11th at 12 o'clock noon, sharp. The website will have, get a link for you to request the reservation for the remaining Sundays of the October. And then the link will be live for 24 hours. Once we do that, um, you will get notification, about 30 of you that will come, 30 people per week will get notifications that they're going to get uh, to come that week. Um, so we'll do it for the whole month of October. And... Uh, um, you'll get that. But don't come unless you get an email confirmation because we don't have plate room for extra people. We're going to put, get as many people as we have chairs and we can social distance and do all that fun stuff. So make sure that you have um, <laughs> plenty of, that you have your reservation. Now, be patient with us. This is all new. It's all subject to change and it probably will change. Um, so check on the website nhcrs.org to make sure that we're here. Um, just so you know, Wednesday night services will remain the same. Um, and then we will be, we'll continue um, on uh, Facebook and Zoom just like we have been. That will be going indefinitely. Uh, we don't think we're out of the woods yet. There are going to be people we think that want to keep coming. Um, so uh, we'll keep that going. Uh, and also, uh, we'll be following the uh, Appendix F, which is the official thing from the LA Co County Department of uh, um, Health and uh, for opening places of worship. 
So we look forward to having people back here. Uh, it's going to be in limited ways. If you have questions about whether you're confirmed or not, call the office and they'll tell you. Um, and uh, uh, get signed up. We're going to have that 24-hour window. Um, look forward to seeing you here. Have a mark. <laughs> Indeed, and just so you know, so you're not surprised, part of the service, the, uh, those who are coming in person will be on the patio as opposed to in the sanctuary where Dr. Mark will be giving the uh, sermon and the other parts of the service will be happening in here. So like Blair said, it's new territory uh, and those of you who do not have internet access begin in that 24 hour window that he mentioned before October 18th, so the Sunday before, uh, you could call into the office and uh, let us know if you would like to attend in person and we'll get back to you as we fill those slots. So, that's good news. And with that good news, I invite us all to move into prayer. And so let us bring our awareness to that part of us that every moment seeks to feel good, just seeks to be happy, seeks to love and feel loved, to be free of anything that feels negative, burdensome, challenging, and to recognize that impulse as an impulse that's felt throughout the universe because that's the impulse of the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible that is God out of which everything and everyone is created and that lives and expresses itself through all that is, including each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this evening. I know that we're gathered by divine appointment, that we feel the impulse of God to awaken to its nature, to experience itself more fully through and as each of us. And that's what brings us together. And I know that every part of this service is filled with and surrounded with the vibration of God's love and enlightenment. And so I know that we feel God is that sense of connection with one another, whether we're here in the same place or physically apart, we can still feel our connection in this one life. We feel the love of all those who are of service. We feel the love and light and artistry of God flowing through Sam and our soloist Jia this evening. I open myself to being a channel through which the message that we've all come to hear, that we all want to awaken to, is spoken. It's all coming from God. It's all God unfolding. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we receive in this time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A snowflake falling from the sky Out where the wind blows Surely I can't fly I am one of a kind Little snowflake Everyone looks different From our head down to our feet Ears, eyes, nose, and hair, everyone unique. And I know 
that you have a smile wide as the sky. And when you smile that special way, we all feel the same inside. I am a snowflake falling from the sky. Out where the wind blows, surely I can't fly. I am one of a kind. Snowflake Smiling faces in the sun Circus fair has just begun Laughter in the eyes of everyone When you're in a sunny way You know it's a special day Now we're on our way to have some fun Surely I can't fly, I am one of a kind, little snowflake, you are one of a kind, little snowflake, and true love is blind. God's love is yours and mine, little snowflake. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gia. Mm. Oh, isn't it nice to hear about snowflakes? <laughs> in this heat right now. That was perfect. <laughs> and speaking of perfect, my topic tonight is perfectly imperfect. So have you ever found yourself stressed, anxious, perhaps um, demoralized or deflated as you strive for some version of perfection, whether it's you know some way that you see yourself wanting to be that would be perfect, whether it be the perfect experience, the perfect relationship, whatever. Ever had that feeling like, oh, you're just chasing after something and you can't quite get there? You know, in Science of Mind, because we teach that God's nature is ever-present in everything and everyone, and God's nature is perfect, then there's an underlying perfection within and around everything and everyone, including each and every one of us, which is really reassuring, except really, I mean, seriously, it's fine in theory that everything has some innate perfection within it, but looking at some of the difficulties that we've encountered, along our life's journeys, looking at the suffering, witnessing the negative conditions and situations in the world, we're supposed to say that everything is somehow perfect? That can be a little bit tough to swallow, right? Well, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, the perfection, the human perfection, somehow we have to shift our awareness of that to be able to accept this idea that everything is perfect. I mean, isn't one of the most annoying things about uh, when this teaching, new thought teachings like science of mind, are used in a way that say you go to someone and you're talking about some really difficult issue that you're facing or something that's just weighing on your heart and their response is, oh, but it's all perfect. I'll show you perfect when you give me a response like that, when I'm you know, bearing my heart and soul. 
And you know, one of my responses in moments like that is, well, if everything is so perfect, why do we gather in places like this? Why do we pray? Why not leave everything as it is? I mean, why would you want to change perfection? So really, it goes back to what I was saying, is I think there's an idea of perfection that we need to reframe and understand. And I think it's, it's a perfection that's beyond our human ideas of what's per perfect. Because, you know, as Gia was thinking about all the different forms, if there's something perfect in everything and everyone, but everything looks so different, obviously no human idea of perfection holds up throughout all time in all possible situations. I mean, perfection, I think, is a moving target. What's perfect for one might not be so perfect for another. What's perfect in one moment might not be perfect in another. I don't know how many of you know, but because uh, I know I speak a lot about my family in France and going to France, but um, I spent a lot of time from uh, age two to 16. My father, who was French, taught up at the University of British Columbia. And so for those years, we lived up in Vancouver. And after my parents separated and my mom and sister and I moved down here to Southern California, let's just say I never resonated with the weather up in the Pacific Northwest. And I remember saying, if I never see another cloudy or rainy day for the rest of my life, I'll be happy. I am moving to Southern California where the weather is absolutely perfect. Well, imagine my surprise years later when we were living through a really bad drought as we've been experiencing in recent years. And I found myself exclaiming on the first cloudy and rainy day how perfect that was. So there really is no one idea of perfection that holds up. But on a higher level, I think there's a, be, a perfection in everything as an impulse for good. Whatever is occurring in this moment, whether we would label it as good, bad, or indifferent, it all serves the purpose of helping us to move forward, to be open to greater possibilities of good. So when we're experiencing experiences that we would say, oh, this is so perfect, it's wonderful, that opens us up, right, to even more good. When we're just feeling the goodness of the moment, we align with that goodness of God and we're open to all the other ways that we can experience it. When we're not experiencing goodness, when we're experiencing pain or suffering, doesn't that cause us to look for ways to move beyond the suffering, to learn from whatever it is that we are not doing in alignment with the spirit of God that is for good, to find a way to get beyond that, to experience more good and to learn from it. I think behind everything is this drive for perfection, which is really a, a drive for good and ever greater good. It's a perfection of God that is infinite in its capacity to create out of itself, pushing up against our finite ideas about ourself and just opening us up to more and more ways to experience good. And I think it's coming from the impulse of God's love. It's an energy that impels us to know, share, and experience goodness beyond what we've known before. So that's not a bad thing. And there's certainly nothing wrong with striving for certain ideals, for experiences that we might label like, that would be so perfect for greater good than we've experienced before. But in Science of Mind, we're always looking for the mindset, the, the construct of our thoughts and beliefs 
that hinder our ability to experience God's goodness that's always within and around us. And so with this idea of you know, perfect and imperfect, I would say it helps us to ask or just be aware of ways that we might be chasing for some idea of perfection that prevents us from experiencing the perfection of the moment. In the New Testament, in the book of Luke, there's this wonderful story about Mary and Martha, where Martha welcomes Jesus into their home, and Mary, her sister, immediately sits at Jesus' feet and just listens to what he's saying, while Martha goes about you know, uh, working and preparing the meal. And at one point, Martha objects you know, asking Jesus to please tell her sister Mary to come and help her. And Jesus explains to Martha, you know, Martha, you're, you're worried, you're upset, but Mary's doing what's better, what's important for this moment. Now, I remember my mother once approaching a monk after hearing a sermon around this story. And, you know, my mom was always wanting to question the deeper meaning. So she looked at him and she says, yeah, that's all fine and dandy that Jesus sort of admonished Martha in a gentle way there. But when it came right down to it, after he was done speaking, Mary and Jesus sat down to a really nice meal prepared by Martha, didn't they? Which made the bug laugh and he reflected on it for a while and he came back to her later and said, you know, I think what this was about is there was absolutely nothing wrong with Martha's heart in terms of wanting to do something really nice, prepare a nice meal. But maybe it didn't have to be so fancy this time. You know, maybe in this moment, what might have been perfect in another occasion, maybe this time it would have been just something very simple and casual so that the perfection of the moment of being able to just sit and listen to spiritual truth that probably was the higher priority in that moment could be enjoyed. You know, sometimes I think when we're striving for some idea of the perfect experience, it's about releasing the idea of perfect being a certain way. I think we'll all be well served to check in sometimes to see if the good the perfection that we're striving for is really in alignment with our values, with our priorities, what we really consider important in life. You know, if we're really striving for that perfection in some task that we're doing at work, that's great, you know, that's still coming from an impulse of love to give something that's really good, that will be appreciated by others, but while we might be trying to do that so perfectly, how perfect are we being in terms of being good partners to our loved ones, to our families, you know, giving our attention to you know, our physical well-being? Where are we setting our priorities? What are we aiming for? And is it really what's most important? If we have an idea that, you know, we want to really work on being more financially abundant. Wonderful. We highly support that. But is that getting in the way, that idea of you know, what would be perfect for us to feel financially abundant, is that getting in the way of us enjoying the abundance of good that's in our lives right now? You know, it's not that any of these goals or ambitions are innately bad in any way. As I said, perfect and imperfect are really moving targets. There's no one right way. We really have to check in with our hearts and see, you know, from that inner wisdom of the divine within us, if the ideal that we're going for really supports what our souls are here to do, to give and share and experience love. And I would also look at the idea of when we recognize 
that we're not living up to our ideals, where we are humanly flawed, where we recognize some of our foibles. I think it's important for us to remember the perfection of the unconditional love of God that holds us in love, that, that is just there as a presence that knows our perfection no matter what, to feel that compassion and to allow ourselves to understand that we're evolving and to do the same for others when we see their flaws and their fo foibles, just to know, you know, there's, we're all in a process of evolving and awakening to that greater good. And on some level, that whole process, the things that are going right and not going right, it's all working together to eventually reveal a greater good. And it's not to become complacent, to just say, well, you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah, that's right, nobody's really perfect. That doesn't mean we can't work on those areas where we're not showing up as well as we can. But it's to just say, yeah, nobody's perfect. And to take that from a place of love and compassion and say, but what can I do to move to the next level from where I am, to be more loving, to be more generous, to take better care of myself and others? You know, I think our imperfections can also serve to cause us to reach out to one another where we might see there's someone can, that can help us, that maybe they're strong in that area and we're not, and that helps us to experience our interconnectedness, so there's a level of perfection about that. I think sometimes we kind of, our imperfections bump up against each other and cause conflicts and cause difficulties, but again, those serve as things to show us where we're not knowing and experiencing our wholeness and that we could call forth some healing where we can be more loving or more kind or more tolerant. So on some level, even in what seems imperfect, there's some perfection to be tapped into and called forth. You know, I loved this past Sunday when Dr. Mark talked about you know, that peace, that really peace resides within us and that it's ours to call forth. How many people said afterwards to me and when we were in the reception line how perfect that message was in these times and I couldn't agree more. And it's been really helpful for me working with that idea, idea remembering that that peace of the divine li lives in me, I can find it in me and call it forth in different situations. It's also helped me to notice those times that I can really fall off the, the trail of peace, how I can get riled. And in noticing a situation where I was getting you know, pretty riled up and recognizing that, okay, I was, I was seeing that it, there was a, a level of impatience around something. And when I got still with it, I realized, you know, a very small dose of that impatience is just like a little movement to get me to move forward to take some action. That part is good. But when I saw, you know, how I just uh, inflated it to such a degree and how riled up I was getting, I could look at that and actually be amused, you know, in this week that I was feeling so good about the ways I could feel anchored in peace. There was a humor that I could call forth into that. There was a compassion that I could call forth into that. And look at the fact that, well, how perfect that when I'm not showing up the way I want to, that there's a possibility to step back and move in a different direction. You know, ultimately the, the sense of waking up to where I was off track, feeling that sense of compassion and inspiration to move forward, there was something beautiful about that. You know, I think if we're willing to examine if our ideas of perfection that we strive for are restricting or preventing us from experiencing greater good, and if we're willing then to let go of those ideas of perfection that don't serve, and serve us and embrace those that actually are a different version 
of perfection that we can step into, when we're also willing to extend compassion to ourselves and others as we discover our human flaws, as we witness their human flaws, but feel the beauty in our capacity to evolve beyond where we are, beyond those flaws and foibles, that's when we're more able to fully align with that sense of God's perfection that's in and around us, even in the midst of what appears to be imperfect here on this human plane of existence. So let's take a moment to turn inward. And from this place of turning within, I invite you to ask yourself if there's any idea of perfection that you strive for that's preventing you from seeing and experiencing the beauty of the now moment. Whatever comes up for you around that, ask yourself, what quality of God would you experience more fully if you attained that idea of perfection, if it became manifest in your life? And as you imagine that, there's a part of you that can feel that. Recognize that as a vibration of God's goodness in you that's just finding new ways to be manifest through you. Open yourself right now to accepting that that, that vibration, that perfection of God already exists in some ways in your life. And that it could imagine, it could manifest in the way that you imagine or in some other way you haven't even perceived. And even if it is to be made manifest in the way that you imagine that you want to move toward, feel the presence of that energy moving you into that greater good, step by step. And recognizing that each step is perfect. It's a part of your evolution. And allow yourself to relax into the knowingness of a greater good, a greater power than you can even imagine. No idea of perfection can even begin to hold up to its perfection. And that it's always there in and around you, impelling you and all creation to move into greater good, greater dimensions of its perfection. And so from this place, please join me in knowing the truth of that presence that we call God, that one life, that one perfect wholeness, being the life of all, it, it truly is the life of each and every one of us gathered here for the services, the life of every being everywhere. And so knowing this, let us speak our word right here, right now. For those who are having any human challenge around the idea of change, knowing that on this human plane of existence, things are always changing, but that the nature of God that underlies everything out of which everything is created is always there to be experienced and expressed in some new way. And that this becomes known and revealed to those that are feeling any sense of loss of something that has changed. That this ever-present good is eternal, birthless, deathless, always there for us to experience. Let us know for all those experiencing any form of dis-ease or discord, that there is a divine, perfect blueprint of wholeness and health and well-being that lies at the center of all creation, and that this one 
is greater than any human experience of dis-ease and discord. And as we know that it is at the center of all, the pathways for healing are revealed. The pathways for the resolution of discord are absolutely revealed and revealing themselves now, creating great healing, physical, emotional, mental, right here, right now, on this plane. Let us know for those who are feeling creatively challenged that there is this nature of giving and receiving in, of God in all beings and each one is imbued with some unique way of sharing God's nature with the world. And as we know this, for those who are feeling challenged in this area, something opens up where they are moved into those perfect right places to share their gifts, their talents, their ways of being, and ways that they are valued and appreciated. We know that this nature of God is limitless, and so for anyone that is experiencing lack or limitation, we know this is just a human idea, and we open ourselves right here, right now, to that idea dissolving, and each one stepping into a greater experience of that infinite giver, receiver that God is in all of us, to be able to more abundantly give and receive love, our creativity and celebrating the creativity of others. If it's in the area of finances, to know that God is a source of all good and to be supplied, sourced, where we are there to be able to generously give back to life. And to remember that that core nature of God is love. So where anyone is feeling disconnected from that vibration, we know for all beings that love is the core of who and what we are. And this moves us into a greater experience of loving relationship with ourselves, with others, with the actions and activities that we engage in. And knowing that that impulse of love is always for greater good, let's honor it by setting our own intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, whether it's for greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for conditions in the world, we absolutely know that we're feeling the impulse of that infinite power, that infinite creative intelligence of God for more and more of its nature to be revealed. And as we know that God is in every one of these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word, knowing it is so, it is done, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I'm only here for God. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you, Gia. So, ha, huh, this is time in our service for affirmative giving. And so we absolutely know that whatever way you like to share your gifts uh, is perfect. Some of the choices are you can uh, give online through our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. Um, you can also call in to the church, 818-762-7566, up to 30 minutes after the service, and we can take your donation over the phone via a credit card or debit card. And of course, you can continue to mail your checks in, as I know some of you like to do. Whatever way you choose, as I said, it's perfect, and we are so appreciative of all the ways that you continue to support us. So let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gia. Gia, remind me, your music on iTunes? Is there, so if you'd like to acquire Gia's music for more inspiration, uh, you can find it on iTunes. Um, let's see. I want to begin by thanking everyone who is of service this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't sure which. Now I know that perfectly I should be looking this way. Um, so, thank you to Gail uh, Pallott and Bob Line, practitioners who are holding vigil for us this evening. Thank you for our Zoom hosts, Barbara Berg and Alma Alvarez. And thank you once again to Melissa Allen for being there to uh, make sure we are uh, transmitting out there, live streaming on Facebook Live. Thank you here in the sanctuary. Adam, who's always here to make sure we are seen and heard, to Blair and Alex, who are here running everything technically here in the sanctuary. Thank you for that. To Doreen, who's running the second camera over here. And to our wonderful soloists this evening, Gia and Sam, as always, thank you for the perfect, <laughs> perfect musical support. Really appreciate it. Um, want to remind, oh, and of course, thank you to all of you for joining us. Hello. I mean, you know, maybe you haven't, and I'm just talking to a camera, but I think you're out there. I feel the vibration. So just a reminder that we'll be here for 30 minutes after service uh, to uh, take donations over the phone 
818-762-7566, or go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service on Zoom, um, so we can connect you with a practitioner for a one-on-one -on -one session that you'd have, if you're on Facebook Live, you have to uh, join us on Zoom. Uh, your prayer requests, you can email to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the office. And if you get the recording, it's option for, for Ministry of Prayer, leave a message. And we have practitioners who check those messages and emails every evening and send them out to all of our practitioners. So you'll be supported by the whole core of practitioners here at North Hollywood. Um, next week, Service as usual, meditation, 6.50 p.m., and service at 7 p.m. on Zoom and, and Facebook Live. And my topic will be transcending woundedness. Maybe. Anyway, um, <laughs> we invite you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website, our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. If you're not getting those e-blasts and newsletters, just go to the website, nhcrs.org, sign up, uh, and you'll get information about what's going on, such as uh, the Embracity, Embracing Diversities, our Diversities Workshop, that's facilitated by practitioner Sabrina Johnson, really getting some wonderful feedback. Uh, it's run already for two weeks out of the 10 weeks, but you can still join. Uh, they'll be meeting through November 21st, and it's a journey of you know learning how to embrace our own and others' diversities using science of mind principles, and the cost for the full term, um, course is $100. The women's group meeting on Zoom. So this coming Sunday, October 4th at 1 p.m. All women are welcome, and we invite you to go to our website, nhcrs.org, to get the Zoom link. As Blair mentioned uh, at the opening of service, uh, we're starting to um, offer our you know, in-person attendance for very limited, we're looking at 30 to 40 people max. Uh, there'll be a reservation process, as he talked about. If you want to get more information about that, again, go to our website. You'll get the details. Service will be on the patio for the sermon, where that's where those who come will be seated. And uh, soloist and pulpit support and all that will continue to occur here. So it's going to be an interesting new, new way of doing service. Uh, but we're just glad we can start to allow some people back on premises. And please note, with the reservation process, we won't be able to allow people on site unless you've been confirmed for your reservation. That's going to be really important so we don't have people you know, uh, feeling upset when they get here and we have to turn them away just so we can honor the proper social distancing guidelines um, you know, for the number we can accommodate. Beyond that, Reminded that we have Zoom virtual patio before and after our services where you can connect and uh, greet congregants and you know socialize. We have teen church meeting on Zoom. We have the men's group meeting every Sunday on Zoom from 11 to 11.30. And our Zoom meditation continues Mondays through Saturdays, 8 to 8, 15 in the morning. It's a wonderful experience. All of that, you can get information for it on our website. Uh, we're just so glad that you joined us this evening. Um, looking forward to continuing in this way, but to gradually at least be seeing each other in social distancing situations soon. With that, I say we turn our attention. We normally, on the last Wednesday of the month, would be uh, standing and singing happy birthday. So let me just say to anyone at a birthday this month, happy, happy birthday. We love you and can't wait to the, for the day when we're back singing happy birthday to one another in person again. And with that, let's turn our attention inward, inward one more time. And so once again, how grateful I am for that one life, that one presence of the divine and how it has revealed itself and made itself known to us and through us throughout our time together. 
I know that through this time we have, whether it be through just the vibration of being together as a community, through the words, the prayers, the music, through all of it, there have been ways that God has revealed itself to us, that we have awakened to that goodness of the divine, that perfection that we can keep calling forth in so many different ways. I know that it blesses us as we go about our lives. It ripples out into the world and blesses others. And so I give thanks right here, right now for all the blessings we've received and the blessings that continue to unfold as we go forward, going on about our lives. And in gratitude, I just release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thank you again for being with us. Let's join in song one more time.